Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Where today I'd like to address misconceptions about this photo, which is quite a well-known one of Concord. Now, I referenced this photo in one of my earliest Flat Earth related videos about two years ago. Specifically for the fact that it is a photograph taken back in 1985 from an RAF tornado, and it's a photo of Concord at a cruising altitude of around 50 to 60,000 feet, and the horizon is clearly curved. Which I brought up at the time to address a very common flat earth claim that the horizon is apparently flat. And I tried to head off any potential claims that the photo was shot with a fisheye lens by pointing out that the Concorde itself is straight, and that if it was shot with a fisheye lens, it would appear curved. I then joked that unless the Concorde was normally very heavily curved the other way, and the fisheye lens was just straightening it out. So that's not a fisheye lens, because otherwise the, the plane would be curved, unless Concorde was already bent and I didn't realise, and the curvature is just getting straightened out. However, I've received quite a few comments from people trying to claim that this was shot with a fisheye lens and that the Concorde was apparently curved. Even now, two years later, I still occasionally receive comments along those same sort of lines. So with this video, I'd like to break down once and for all how we can know for a fact that this photo was not shot with a fisheye lens and that the horizon really was curved. For starters, there is the simple fact that a fisheye lens's distortion radiates from the center lines. So if you take a normal distortion test chart, ideally a lens with no distortion would render all of those lines perfectly straight. With a fisheye lens though, the lines running through the center of the image will render straight, however the further from the center lines you go, the more any lines then become distorted. And looking at the Concorde photo, we can see that the horizon is close to the center of the image. It's certainly much closer to the center than the Concorde itself is. So even if this was a fisheye lens, the amount of distortion acting on the horizon would be much less than the distortion that's acting on Concorde. I think some people were maybe under the impression that the plane itself was in the middle of the image because certain copies of the image online have been cropped to place the plane in the middle, which subsequently would then put the horizon near the top of the photo. However, the original photo has much more sky visible to the point that the sun is at the top of the frame with the horizon closer to the middle. Now, for reference, you can actually de-fisheye an image by dragging the corners outwards away from the center. And if we go with this belief that the image was shot with a fisheye lens and that the horizon should actually be straight, this is what the scene would have looked like to the photographer. And Concord certainly does not look like that normally. Now, like I said, I made a remark in my original video that if this was a fisheye lens, then Concorde would have had to have been curved in order for the lens distortion to then render it straight. And several people remarked that the Concorde was curved at the front and back. I think there's some confusion with this. I was referring to the entire plane would need to be one continuous curve, i.e. the whole fuselage, not just the ends of it. Now, the ends were curved in the sense that they came down to a point, but that's no different than any other plane, and nobody would try and claim that all planes are curved. Where I think the confusion comes in is that the nose of Concorde could be angled down. I know at least one person recently went with that argument, but they were at least prepared to admit their error when I pointed out that the nose only dropped during takeoff and landing. You see, in order for Concorde to reach its maximum cruising speed of more than twice the speed of sound, it needed to be very streamlined. And that long pointed nose design is typical of supersonic planes that need to punch through the sound barrier. The problem with that for Concorde was that because it was optimized for high speed flight, i.e. with the pointed nose and the delta wing design, at low speeds, such as during takeoff and landing, the plane actually needed quite a high angle of attack in order to generate sufficient lift. But that meant, with the long nose, it would completely obscure the pilot's view of the runway ahead. So the front of the plane was designed with a droop nose, which would be dropped down for better visibility during takeoff and landing, 
and then it could be raised up to reduce drag once the plane was flying. And given that the photo was taken whilst the plane was at high altitude, the nose was going to be in a raised position. So we would expect to see a straight plane in the photo. But now let's get into the nitty gritty details of how we can easily tell that this was not shot with a fisheye lens. And really it all boils down to perspective. See, the job of an optical lens is to refract the incoming light such that it focuses it onto the camera sensor or the camera film. Now, all optical lenses used curved glass to achieve this because straight glass wouldn't actually change anything. The light would refract by an amount one way when entering the glass, but it would then refract by the same amount the other way when exiting. It would basically be like looking through a window pane. So curved glass is needed, and with wide angle lenses, this curve has to be very extreme in order to get such a wide angle of view channeled down the lens barrel. This inevitably creates circular distortion. So lens manufacturers then use additional pieces of glass within the lens to try and correct for those distortions. However, this extra glass then makes the lens design more complicated and inherently the lens becomes larger, heavier, and generally more expensive. Fisheye lenses, by comparison, essentially steer into this distortion rather than trying to correct for it. This allows fisheye lenses to be smaller, lighter, and generally cheaper than similar focal length and aperture rectilinear lenses. And you will notice a clear trend if you look for fisheye lenses. You don't get telephoto fisheye lenses. They're all short focal length, i.e. wide angle. Now, that presents a major problem for the idea of this Concorde photo being shot with a fisheye lens, because the plane spans most of the width of the photo. Concorde itself was 204 feet long. With a wide angle lens to get the front and rear of the plane at the edges of the frame would require the camera to be moved very close to the plane. That would be the case even with any wide angle lens, not necessarily a fisheye lens. But that would then cause a drastic change in perspective because for example, if you are standing halfway down Concorde, 20 feet away from it, you would be 20 feet away from the middle of the fuselage, but you would have 102 feet of plane on either side and at an angle. So the front and rear of the plane would be around 104 feet away from the camera. So that would put them five times further away from the camera than the middle of the plane. This would drastically reduce how big the ends of the plane appeared compared to the middle. Whereas if you're a thousand feet away from the middle of the plane, that would put the ends of the plane 1,005 feet away from the camera. So a much smaller difference, which would then give much closer respective proportions. This is what photographers often refer to as lens compression. Moving further away and zooming in brings the respective distances of the foreground and background much closer to each other in relation to the camera. For example, here's a photograph I took of a cruise ship from across a harbour with a 75mm lens. And the size of the parts of the ship near the front of it appear much the same apparent size as similar objects near the back, such as the windows running along the hull. Here is that same ship, but taken from much closer with an 11mm non-fisheye lens. And you can see the proportions of the ship now appear drastically different. If we look at the Concorde photograph, we can see that the windows are similarly sized all the way along, and the doors in the middle and the front are also similar sized. The rear door on Concorde was physically much smaller anyway. We can see simply by comparing photos of Concorde that were taken from close by versus photos that were taken at a distance, that the plane's proportions in this photograph are much more consistent with the camera being far away from the plane than it being close to it. Now, if the plane is far away from the camera and the camera has a fisheye lens, that would mean that the plane would appear very small in the frame. It would not be able to span the whole width of the image. So there should be no doubt that this photograph was taken from a long distance with a long focal length lens, not a fisheye lens. But just in case there is any doubt left, here is a photograph of a Concorde at the Aerospace Museum in Toulouse taken with a fisheye lens. 
easy to tell by the extreme curvature of the lines in the floor and the wall on the right hand side. This photo gets the front and rear of the planes a similar distance across the frame, but look how distorted the Concorde looks. And for reference as to just how close the photographer had to be for this, here is another photo of the same plane taken with a full frame Canon 5D Mark II and a 16mm f2.8 non-fisheye lens. I'm pretty sure you can't even get a 16mm f2.8 full frame fisheye lens for Canon anyway, but this one clearly isn't a fisheye lens since the floor lines and the wall on the right are rendered straight. And it's clear that the fisheye photo was taken near the wing of this small business jet. Now, finally, there were a few people who, whilst not necessarily flat earthers, did suggest that the lens was still a fisheye because the horizon looked too curved. Well, bear in mind, this was shot up at between 50 to 60,000 feet. I found this photo, which was taken from the cockpit of a U-2 spy plane at 70,000 feet, and the horizon still looks extremely curved. Yet you can tell this isn't a fisheye lens either, because the wing and the edges of the cockpit are not heavily distorted. Not only that, I found this video from the photography channel Petapixel, who'd arranged for photographer Blair Bunting to fly up in a U-2 to do a photo shoot of another U-2 up at 70,000 feet. And within the video, Blair talks about wanting to take his father's vintage Nikon 50mm f1.4 lens from 1972 up with him on the flight. I also brought up my dad's, uh, it was a 1972, I think, Nikon F, uh, manual focus, uh, 51.4. Hey dad, um, I, uh, I didn't tell you, but I took your lens and um, I brought it to space. And this is the photo that he took with that lens. And the horizon still has a significant curve to it. So hopefully that clears that up. This photograph of Concord could not possibly have been shot with a fisheye lens, meaning the horizon was most definitely curved. And that's going to draw this video to a close. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then do please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.